Hi guys, welcome back to Finpact. There is some great news that I never really thought would see the light of day. So this video is all about how FTX have recovered $7.3 billion worth in assets. These were particularly in cash and liquid crypto assets. Now, I've made plenty of videos of what happened with the FTX collapse. So if you do want to understand that, I've linked them down below in the description box. But essentially, there was an FTT token liquidity crisis. They were over leveraged and they didn't have enough collateral basically to recover customers' deposits. So what happened? Well, customers started withdrawing their funds, very similar to the bank runs that we saw in the 2008 financial crisis. I've already made a video of how the FTX collapse was very similar to the 2008 financial crisis from the way in which it affected the overall crypto markets. It caused panic and fear and customers were drawing their deposits and that made them go under. Now, honestly, I'm so surprised that $7.3 billion worth of assets have been recovered. I mean, essentially, they declared bankruptcy on November 11, 2022. That was just a few months ago. It's so weird. It doesn't feel like April 2023, but in five months, they've collected that many assets. That's incredible. FTX attorney Andy Dieterich said that the company is starting to look towards its future, especially given it spent months of effort in recovering assets and also figuring out why and what went so horrendously wrong under the leadership of indicted Sam Bankman Fried. Now, recently, we've seen prices in the crypto market skyrocket. Prices of gold have also skyrocketed, and this is because of the potential banking crisis. A few banks did go under, and if you want an update on all of that, check my previous video. This is why you guys need to subscribe to this channel, so that you stay up to date with all the latest market news and see how it impacts your investment decisions. Anyway, the price of Bitcoin has been rallying. Now, Bitcoin has always been considered a sort of safe haven asset. And when you see market turmoil, particularly to do with governments and macroeconomics that is controlled by the centralized entities that we have globally, that's when you see things in the decentralized industry rally. This is because cryptocurrencies and gold are not controlled by macroeconomic policies, such as how the Federal Reserve and lots of central banks around the world have been rising interest rates to control the inflation. And I don't know about you guys, if you have stayed on this channel, but I predicted, I predicted that springtime we would see a mini rally. I do think we'll see some calmer months in the crypto markets around June, July. It always tends to slow down a little bit in summer. I don't know if that has any reason behind it, but what we've seen in the last bull run is that April is when things started rallying, particularly post the pandemic. And then we see it calm down a little bit in around June, July time. And then the minute you get to August, prices start popping. But what's really interesting this time is the way in which the crypto industry has evolved. I do believe that the last bull run that we saw post the pandemic, we didn't have maybe the infrastructure, the regulations and the lessons that have been learned from the crashes that we saw then. I think people are becoming a lot smarter in looking towards projects that actually add value and not investing in gamble like coins and complete shit coins and run of the mill meme projects. Now, Andy Diederich did actually say that they did benefit from a recent rise in crypto prices and its total recovery would be valued at 6.2 billion based on the crypto prices from November, 2022. And now they've recovered $7.3 billion with the rise in prices because when they did declare bankruptcy, they had traders, so the customer withdrawals being pulled out at around $6 billion from the platform. I mean, any platform would panic in that case. Now, thank goodness, obviously, after Sam Bankman freed, they did hire a new CEO and his approach is a lot more prudent than Sam's. He has said that improper fund transfers and poor accounting actually were some of the reasons that caused the complete failure, in his words, of controls. And let's also talk about how greedy FTX had gotten. They kind of popped out of nowhere. Everyone was saying FTX. You know, people were comparing FTX to Binance, to Huobi, to other major exchanges that are very much afloat today. And now so is hopefully FTX. But actually, I did say that the news when FTX collapsed was not shocking to me. I wish I told you guys earlier, but a lot of influencers in the crypto industry, we like to partner with different crypto exchanges, particularly ones that 
that we use. Now, I did not have a sponsorship with FTX, but I had a friend and he had a sponsorship deal with FTX. Now, before all of the news was announced, before the FTX scandal even hit the public light, and remember, it didn't hit all in one go, it was sort of a domino effect, and then everything started becoming a huge disaster. But his sponsored contract with FDX was canceled a few months before. And I messaged him when the news was public and the first time I'd heard of how the FTX collapse even started, I contacted him saying, what's happening with your FTX deal? And he said, no, they canceled it a few months ago. This is before the public news had even come out that there was all this crap going on behind the scenes with FTX. Now, I do believe you guys that FTX, if they are on the road to recovery, they will really, really need to work, one, on rebranding themselves because their reputation is... I'll put it this way, I'm a bit too scared to put my money into FTX, even with the new CEO. So I'd like to see some sort of credibility arise and some security. Number two, and the most important one is, well, what this new CEO said. Number one, they need to have proper accounting. They need to have adequate amounts of reserves, especially if there is a liquidity crisis. They need to know where they are over leveraged because FTX, if you remember, the FTT token had been bought by other funds and they also went under. Essentially, no one had the collateral and when the FTT token tanked, it caused a liquidity crisis, not just for FTX, but for example, crypto lender Genesis. If you remember, crypto lender Genesis is and currently is also FTX's largest unsecured creditor with $226 million worth in claims. But now that FDX have recovered assets, I do hope that Genesis gets their claims settled and creditors and depositors are no longer owed money. If this happens, it shows the resilience of the crypto markets and how they can come back from catastrophic events. Anyway guys, I hope this was a simplified, easy update video on what's been happening because I think this is pretty huge news. And also guys, sorry for the pessimism, but I did not think FTX was going to recover the assets. So well done FTX for doing so. Hopefully you learn from your catastrophes and go forward from strength to strength. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. This is not financial advice. My opinions on the crypto markets are simply my observations. I'm not a financial advisor. Remember when you invest in crypto, capital is at risk and cryptocurrencies are highly volatile. The markets move very quickly. So make sure you do your own research. That is why I'm making videos, but go check out other videos. Check out the news, make your own decisions. Don't base decisions on my video. You've got to do your own research. And yeah, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.